there really was a percent that I was presenting without him because he helped me develop these. <coughs> so in yeah, the line is So um, poverty is a huge problem. I don't know if you know, but we are the wealthiest country in the world. And it is a shock to people to learn that we're by far wealthier than any other country. China is a distant second, Japan is a distant third, because we have so much poverty. We have so much poverty in Memphis, particularly. And uh, so, you know, almost half of the children in our community are in poverty, which is really bad. But that means we are going to encounter it in our jobs and in the work that we do. And the students that we educate and teach are going to encounter clients in poverty, whether we are in counseling or we are in social work or public health or education. In any of these areas, uh, we're going to find in poverty, we're going to have to deal with people in poverty. And this is a problem because depending on how we attribute this poverty is going to be how we serve our clients. Now, we can attribute poverty to individual behaviors that is, uh, we're lazy or the poor drink too much, they're in temperate, they have too many children, uh, any of those things. Or perhaps it's a structural causes. Um, wages are too low, there aren't many jobs, and whatever amount of money you make is not enough to support the family, uh, schools are terrible. I think they are, but we say those things. Um, Etc. 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 There are situations in the structure in the system that make it difficult for people to escape from, um, or bad luck. Here's the thing: uh, bad luck will, if the conditions of society or the structures are such that being born a woman or African American will result in lower opportunities. It is really not bad luck. It is, again, structural. It's racism, it's sexism, it's other things in the structure. It's not luck. Losing a job when there are enough supports, where you have savings, when you have a huge system that will prevent you from falling into poverty. It, if you don't have any of that, that's a bad luck. So again, structural. So I really don't think there are three different views on how we attribute poverty. There are really two. Uh, we either attribute it to individual behaviors, how people behave and what they do, internal attributions, or to structural causes, external attributions. So it's the system. There are no jobs. Everything is too expensive. We cannot afford it. Daycare is not available. Or uh, you drink and you are lazy. All of those. Again, it matters to us. There's a huge body of research that shows that people that are in all of these service industries and others uh, tend to treat people they view as having these internal attributes worse than those people who are the victims of whatever structural conditions. So when poor people are blamed for their poverty, uh, they are sometimes seen as less than, less capable than, uh, they're ashamed for their poverty. With the result that people don't want to access those services. Why would you want to go see a social worker or help a good worker? Or why would you talk to a teacher if you're going to be made to feel like it's your fault and you are a really awful person? So this has two effects. One of them is that the delivery of services is less, and at the same time, people want to access services a lot less. So it really matters a lot uh, how we perceive poor people in our clients and what we teach our students in terms of poor people and how they perceive poor people in order to really have good services and good outcomes. And we're not going to have any good outcomes with any programs if we are not treating people like people, treating them right. So 
about the blaming index, this blaming idea. And this is just attributing this poverty to all of these individual internal behaviors. You're poor because it's your fault versus not blaming uh, our, our poor people because there are structural conditions that make it so. Um, low wages, discrimination, exploitation, what happens. So this is the blame index. The way we first developed this, we tested it with a five different instructors throughout the country. We had 148 completed surveys, pre and post tests. We started with a 12 item lighter scale. And these are our demographics. So very, very typical of social work, uh, very female. Uh, we were mostly urban. Uh, most people were under 30. So this is our typical social work type of group of people. It might also apply to nursing, um, maybe education. I don't know how likely it will be to apply to other fields, but um, very typical. So we started this measure. Castillo and Becerra had a 12-item instrument. And we uh, did exploratory factor analysis, and we decided that this, the negative perceptions of social welfare policies was not appropriate. It really didn't load onto anything. It was terrible. But these two were very good. So we retained these eight items to develop our fine index. So these are the questions for the strict structural attribution to poverty. And so, here is the thing. Here are the, the questions for individual attributions to power. So this type of questions. Here's the thing. People can think both things a lot, or both things a little bit, or both things not very much at all. So um, you may think, well, yes, uh, there other some structural forces happening here. And you may answer, you know, bye, 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 to this one. You may also think, well, um, there is also lack of motivation, and it's very high. So how do we make sense of people thinking that both structural individual causes can be very high, or one's very high and the other's not, or maybe neither are very relevant, or maybe they're relevant a little bit. So, this is what we need. Um, subtract that whatever score they got for structural causes from the individual causes to construct the blaming index and the blaming score. So whatever amount is left over from having taken all the attribution to the structure, it is entirely and purely attributed to the individual. And so the blaming index goes from plus four to minus four. And you can see here, if somebody says, oh yes, totally, it's they're lazy and they're horrible and they don't want to work and they're not motivated and now the environment has nothing to do with this, that would be a plus four. If somebody says, well, yeah, both are really important, that would be a zero. And if somebody says, yeah, no, they're not lazy and it's nothing to do with the individual, it's all structural, it would be a minus four. So plus four is the most blaming, minus four would be the least blaming. Uh, and what this does is tries to combine these ideas because it's very difficult to tell where people really stand when we have these two dimensions that are operating at the same time. If somebody says, yes, people are doing, <coughs> but there are a lot of structures in place, that's a lot less blaming than saying none of the structures are causing problems, it's all behaviors. And that's what we wanted to capture with this, the idea 
that while people are holding these two types of concepts in their head, they're really just part of this one-dimensional construct, which is how much blaming there is on the individual. So uh, we did lots of statistics to test it, and we are very satisfied if it is good. We are continuing to test it. Uh, but we were very happy with the amount that was explained. The internal consistency was actually much better at, uh, for this individual attribution. But then there's more questions. What we found is that social work students tend to not blame uh, people very much. This is actually uh, a lot higher than I would like to see in social work students uh, because that means that mostly they don't blame, and maybe a little bit. Um, but what we saw is that after the post-test, uh, we have reduced the amount of blaming. So what we're doing in our classes in social work uh, seems to be effective in moving the needle towards less blame on the poor. Now, what do we need to do to move it even further? Oh, we're coming up with awesome interventions in classes and things. Um, but we are satisfied that this is a good tool for us to use and that uh, we are on the right track to where we want to be. There are limitations like every research and of course we only did it with social work students so if anybody has nursing students or teaching students or any other students that this might be relevant for, come see me and I'll be happy to share this awesome instrument with you. And uh, of course, you know, these are self-reported and I answer human error. Oh, absolutely. And we cannot have, of course, a causal inference. But um, that was my last slide. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it is very important to assess how much blaming there is because ultimately we want to educate professionals that will serve everybody equally, respectfully, and to the best of their abilities. Thank you.